Today is a special day for me. Bet you can't guess what it is. <laughs> All right, everybody. Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode four. Let's do it. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and share the video if you feel like it. So this week I got sent some gossip. I got sent some information about Melissa in high school and her younger years. That's not going to be out here today. <laughs> That's somewhere else. <laughs> um, I got sent a video of Joe letting a woman take a shot off his chest and he was very like flirtatious with this woman while he was married with Melissa and he has no wedding ring on and the woman has a wedding ring on. It's just very strange. I'll, I'm going to play that for you right now. <laughs> I like that one. That was on my nose. That was good. Special thanks to TreyFab2022 for making sure I didn't miss that gem. This is officially the Louis Ruelas filter now. <laughs> It's like a namaste filter. It's so funny. Okay, before we get and fall in love with one side or the other, because Lord knows, like I always say, I could care less. I'm really just presenting the information to you guys. Let's take a look at Louis Ruelas's appearance on Watch What Happens Live. I kind of mentioned it last week's in last week's uh, recap, but I didn't play it for you. And I just feel like I need to play it. I said, since being let go from your job last season, what are you doing now career-wise? Start a new company. Uh, what's the, what, what, what is it? It's in media. It's in media? media. Like what? What? Uh, digital media. Digital media, like ad sales? Uh, lead generation ad sales. Yeah. Uh, well, lead generation, isn't that what Jen Shaw's going to? No, know? it's a little bit Okay, different. all right. <laughs> I'm not messing around today. We're going to get dirty right off the bat. All right, let's look at Danielle Cabral's show she had on MTV in 2006. They followed her to L.A. to pursue her dreams. <laughs> True life. Is this her true life or is this her true life? Is this her true life? The first time I saw the Hollywood sign, I broke down into tears. It took more than a year, but Danielle from Staten Island was determined. It was Hollywood or bust. I made it. I made it to Hollywood. Finally, I have arrived. You crazy little son of a You did it. Fame, here you come, Danielle. What's up? I'm Danielle DePietro, and I am Staten Island. Is she Staten Island or New Jersey? I'm so confused. So Danielle Cabral had a charity event recently, and Jennifer Aiden posted about it on her Insta feed. You will notice who is noticeably not invited to Danielle's charity event. Not like a typical charity event, I have to say, but maybe this is New Jersey style. just wanted to say thank you at this point in the video for my birthday messages yesterday. I saw and read them all. They meant a lot. Thank you guys. Let's pretend the tiger's you. <laughs> so let's start the recap. Episode four really starts out with two things that are being considered. One is whether or not Joe Gorga and Melissa Gorga are intentionally starting some sort of circus around the fight with Teresa Judice and Louis Ruelas, or is it that Teresa is intentionally hurting Joe and has never prioritized his feelings or Melissa as family? And so Teresa hasn't been done right by Joe, let's say. All right. Louis's position at this point in episode four has shifted from episode three. He's now wanting to make peace instead of like coming for 
Melissa and Joe in a pissed off way like he was before. Now he's trying to get Teresa to make amends with So what changes Louis Ruelas' mind in not attacking the Gorgas anymore? Well, when Joe yelled at him in episode three, I guess Louis Ruelas realized how hurt Joe was and that he felt a responsibility to get Teresa to make amends with him. And he did articulate to Teresa in the scene that he thinks that she should invite Joe to their housewarming party, which is a love bubble themed party. Yes, love bubble again. We can't escape it. That and pineapples. No, I'm kidding. There's no pineapples, but it's hell. Okay. But then what happens Teresa is... Teresa calls Joe and she invites him to her love bubble housewarming party. And Joe declines the offer. And the call is really uncomfortable. And he's in front of Melissa when he's talking to Teresa. And Teresa's obviously in front of Louie. And Louie is oddly writing notes to Teresa on what to say to Joe to try to get him to come. And the whole scene is weird. Anyway, Joe declines and Teresa gets off the phone like, told you so. Melissa tries to convince Joe to come, but Joe doesn't want to come. He's like, I want to stay home. He doesn't end up doing anything. He just doesn't want to be there. He says, there's nothing worse than feeling uncomfortable in your own family's home. And he's glad to just not be there. However, Melissa puts her big girl pants on and goes and wants to show face that she's a good Italian and that she is going to show Teresa respect and that she wishes her good you know, luck uh, with her new home and life. And so she makes the very difficult decision to go to the party without Joe and she misses him the whole time. And she finds it very painful that he's not there. All of the housewives make it to the love bubble party, except for Joe Gorga. Oh, wait, he's not a housewife. Never mind. <laughs> it's a little shade there. Okay. So there's some other little subplots that are happening in episode four. Um, Dolores is dealing with the dynamic between Frank and Polly. They meet. Um, Polly says to Frank, listen, uh, you know, I'm now Dolores's man. I want her to rely on me. And Frank complains that Dolores kept him away from Polly. And that's why, you know, they didn't connect. And Polly was like, stop blaming a woman, take some accountability basically. And like, you know, reach out to me in the future. So Frank and Polly's relationship doesn't seem to be going in a positive direction at this moment, but not in any major way that we have to worry too much. However, Frankie Jr., Dolores' son, says, like, I'm really worried dad's going to start feeling uncomfortable and I don't want him to feel that way. And Dolores is like, listen, he was a shitty husband. I love Frank, but it's my turn. Jennifer Aiden is definitely... Uh, being positioned as the villain, which I think she's enjoying. <laughs> she's getting a lot of attention, a lot of camera time. Jen goes on a date with Bill Aiden. Um, their marriage is stressed at the moment. Jennifer feels like she can do whatever she wants because Bill Aiden cheated on her. And that's sort of the ultimate endorsement to do whatever you want. But Bill, although he cheated, doesn't want to give her that kind of carte blanche. She's like, listen, just shut up and support me. And let's like, it's the only way forward. Bill Aiden still seems to be having some sort of like midlife crisis. He's supposed to get an old Ferrari. Instead, he gets a new Ferrari. It had like Magnum PI vibes, totally. Just picture that in your head and you've got the scene. Um <laughs> on a limb and I'm going to say, I question any man who, you know, in his forties or fifties gets a red brand new Ferrari, because I believe men are pulling women with that car when they have it in that circumstance. You're not 20, you're not 30, you're not even 40. You know, you've been there, done that. It's not like he hasn't lived the dream and had many a nice car, something else going on here. I'm just saying, okay. So I'm going to stop here. Jennifer either is like almost self-producing the show or she is being produced because there's a scene where Jennifer, the new friend of, and Rachel Fuda go to lunch 
and they compare stories during this lunch and they find out, it just so happens during this lunch, that Jennifer Aiden called both of them, but gossiped and badmouthed different people to each person. So she calls Rachel and badmouths Dolores, knowing that Rachel is close friends with Dolores and that Frank trained her for this big competition and she's super close with that whole family. And then Jen calls Jennifer um, to badmouth Jennifer about Margaret, even though she knows Jennifer has been close friends with Margaret for the last three okay, years. So let me just share some behind the scenes from when I was uh, shooting reality TV before, okay? This is incredibly produced, this moment. Like the producers were feeling vulnerable that they needed to kickstart the drama. They used Jennifer Aiden to do it, okay? This was so strategized. So this is manufactured drama, and whenever I get this, I'm kind of like, meh, it's not that interesting to me. The reason we're so attracted to the Gorgas verse, the Judices drama, is it's real. And so it like it's always going to outshine the fake drama that producers try to put in the show to keep it interesting. Okay, so let me tell you how it works. The producers come over to your house and they go, we want to shoot you making a few phone calls. We need you to call Rachel Fuda and we need you to talk to her about this. And sometimes they'll help you. They'll say like, you know, you could talk to her about her nose and then, you know, maybe how you felt about the party you know, if you have a really shady producer, they will just say like what they want you to call about, but they won't give you some sort of other out that could protect you, right? So Jennifer is obviously well-liked by her production team. So they're protecting her. They're giving her outs every time they ask her to do something. Um, th that's how it works. But if you're not getting help, oh my gosh, it's so hard. Anyway, they go to the... Um, love bubble party and this is going to cause the big dramatic moment the producers have to guarantee is going to occur so at the love bubble party margaret immediately uh finds out that you know jennifer aiden had bad mouth her to her friend jennifer and it really pisses her off and then uh rachel fuda also says to dolores when it all comes out in this like fight that that Jennifer Aiden had also bad mouthed her. Jennifer Aiden takes an attitude like I'm happy that I uh you know I I wasn't really bad mouthing anyone. I just called Jennifer to look for a marriage counselor therapist because she seems to know so much about therapy. I thought maybe she could help me find one for me and Bill. And in the process, I just happened to talk about Margaret. And then she said that she called um, Rachel because she was bonding about a bad nose job. Because they both have terrible nose jobs. And so she was calling her to like bond on that basis. And then it came up about Dolores. And she said she apologized for saying that she had a bad nose job. And she was like, look, I have a bad nose job. I'm not happy with my nose. You know, so I, I don't see what the big deal is in me doing this. Anyway, Jennifer could talk herself out of anything, I'm pretty sure, okay? She's like a professional talk herself out of anything because the truth is she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care at all about anybody on this show. So that's just, you know, that's who she is. So the only person she cares about is Teresa, and that's because she's the big boss lady. <laughs> anyway, Rachel Fuda starts to steal the limelight from Danielle on this episode. She's really starting to shine. So she uh, takes on Jennifer Aiden. They both scream at each other. Jennifer calls her an idiot. And then there's that classic scene in the trailer where Rachel Food is like leaving the party. She says goodbye to everyone. And Jennifer throws one last dig at her and says, don't let the door hit you on your way out. And Rachel says, there is no door, asshole. <laughs> Who knows where Rachel and Jennifer's relationship will end up going after all these nose job complaints against each other. Women believe that the reason behind 
all of this drama with Jen comes down to Jen not getting attention at home. So she's got to get attention by being like, uh, you know, the read between the lines is try to be the star of the show by being the villain. But what they say, because they can't say that, is that she's just trying to get attention from the women, okay, by, you know, being like messy. And she'll end up saying at the end of all this, you know, oh, but I was just going through a bad time. And, you know, that's the that's the like number one out. I don't know how that works. Um, would never work with me. That's why I'm not on the show. I'd be like, I can't forgive you. You're stupid. <laughs> that's it. You're out. <laughs> they couldn't cast quick enough. <laughs> All right. So um, Teresa gives this big speech with Louis Ruelas and she says, um, I'm so happy you guys are all here because you are my chosen family. And Joe Gorga, of course, is not there. This sends Melissa to the bathroom in tears because Joe isn't there and she feels really hurt by the chosen family wording. And the kids um, are not really supporting Melissa either. They're kind of like, they're very polite to her as an aunt, but she doesn't feel like they remember anything she did for them and she, it's like gone. And that's the end, the end of the episode with sad Melissa. Aww. A few of you guys on my last video commented that I should write a book because I have so many contacts into entertainment and stuff, right? Well, I wanted to let you know that a lot of that is in the Patreon. And when I do talk about a celebrity in there that I've had an interaction with, I do share my stories in there, my personal ones. And then also, if you're curious more about me, because I'm so much more than that little stint on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills you guys witnessed, as you probably can gather, um, there is several episodes where I talk about my life and it's really weird and wild stuff. Ask any of the patrons that are on the YouTube channel, they'll tell you. And we're about to do a really dramatic uh, part of the story, so you would be jumping in right at a good time. So if you're curious or about you just me. want to feel better about yourself, I'm sure my life will help you with that. <laughs> well, I'm off to go fishing with my son for my birthday. <laughs> Say la vie. And for those of you who have a birthday this month, happy birthday to you.